Sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. DHX1138. By the way, there is a. There's supposed to be a. Oh, you can't see it in here now. Did they take all the junk out? They cleaned it out, I think. Some of it. Supposedly, uh, there is an old automobile, like shrunken down, in the garbage. It might be down with the luggage then. Or that might have been with the original Star Trek. There's a couple Easter eggs from, you know, Adventures Through Inner Space in this queue. Are they still here where they all went to the original Star Trek? Huh? Are they still here with that original Star Trek? Result? No, I, I, I think that, no, that animatronic is Carousel of Progress. Yeah, well, America Sings. America Sings, yeah. Or you know what it is? There's an automobile in his conveyor. That's what it is. There you go. Oh, thank you. God, we're getting right on here, aren't we? Nice. Another actually interesting sort of connection between Tony Baxter and this attraction is that he was a cast member here. When it was at Adventures Through Inner Space, he was, he was actually a cast member that helped guests board their automobiles. I mean, how many how many Imagineers can say that they they worked as a cast member on an attraction and then built the attraction that replaced it? Probably not many, right? That's pretty neat. Dude sold ice cream on Main Street and was a was a cast member right here on Adventures Through Inner Space and then built Star Tours. You, you heard his story about sneaking into Pirates of the Caribbean? Yes, I was going to mention that as well. Yeah, that was kind of a connection to Pirates. You told that story at like, the Legend of the Metro in Panel yeah. 23 last year. He was down there when it was still being built, walking yeah. through. Walking through. Yeah, he snuck in after that. Like, he was While he was right. working at Gibson Girl. Yeah. But instead of getting, instead of getting fired, or I guess we... Yeah. They were like, yeah, come look at this stuff. That's what I love about Tony, is that he was just... That's how, he was just fascinated and interested in love with the process uh, and it shows in his work it wasn't about you know I mean he had a deep deep desire to want to do this since he was a young a young person uh, how he even got into this you know working at Disneyland was he just wanted to work here he just wanted to work here like so many cast members are the same way they, they deal with a lot but he also went ahead and got a college education and learned he, he his career choice his major in college was based on his desire to work here, uh, choosing art and uh, um, I can't remember the other. Not, yeah, like landscaping, exactly. Uh, just figuring out how to build a pleasant environment. And that, I mean, come on, Big Thunder and Splash Mountain and Indiana Jones, it shows. The, there are lots of engineers, I'm, I'm just jibber jabbering, but there's a lot of Imagineers out there who can build a ride, but not many that can build a ride that looks good, you know? And that's that was why I love Tony Baxter so much. Present attraction notwithstanding, because... <laughs> Although I do like the queue for Star Tours. It is a fun queue. I like this one. I know you do. <laughs> Star Tours complete. We arrived safely from our trip around the galaxy to find they took out Path of the Jedi, Ian. Yeah, it was gone as of last week. We're gonna do now you can see Ant-Man and the Wasp, exclusive sneak peek. Uh, Liz was joking yesterday. She asked if this was a reaction to the poor solo performance and maybe Disney's trying to, you know, uh, abandon ship on Star Wars. I said, what do you mean? Like, including that Star Wars land that they're building over there, too? They're gonna shutter that? They're just gonna give up? <laughs> no. But anyway, do you think that that's interesting that they 
I think that? they would have put it in the Bugs Theater, but they already closed it. Okay, so, right, so what has more value? The, the preview of Ant-Man versus the... I keep wanting to say Ant-Man versus the Wasp. Uh, what has more value, Ant-Man and the Wasp or Path of the Jedi? It's not that Path of the Jedi necessarily has, has a lot of value one way or the other. It's just they want Marvel is largely being kept at DCA. Yeah. And the, the second preview theater that's plug related is right. closed. They, so they can't. Well, that, and the Incredibles theater, the, the other theaters being used for the Incredibles preview. That's does that then suggest that they, to answer my question, I think, it does suggest to me anyway, that they think that this has more pull, more, more draw than... Path of the Jedi does. Yeah for, yeah, for a few weeks, and then the movie will come out, the fleet will go away, and the, the either Jedi will come back, or the theater will sit empty. What do you think about empty? Uh, it's not a great way to use attraction space, <laughs> <Right>? but... Uh, <laughs> well, I only ask because the last time I went to Path of the Jedi, there were eight people in there, and this no. was on Star Wars Day. No, yeah, it, it, doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't... Star Wars Day, there were eight people in there. I mean, it's a well-edited fan. Yeah. It sure but is. That's the choice. It's a fan edit, and that's all. Yeah. It's well made, but that's not something you go to a theme park. For. No, no. I don't. Well, I don't go there to see previews of Ant-Man and the Wasp either, for that matter. Uh, I'm thirsty. I need a Sprite. Let's use our our uh, handy dandy Disneyland apps, Ian, to purchase us some liquid refreshment. All right, Ian. Freshly refreshed from our refreshing beverages, our iced cold refreshing beverages. Well, I'm still working on mine. I gotta drink a lot of Sprite. Uh, we're back in Adventureland because we're gonna we're gonna do something again. This is this is sort of a it's not a direct Tony Baxter reference. But, but it, it, he didn't build the thing. No, but he's certainly involved. It's, 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 it's continued existence. It's one of my favorite Tony Baxter stories. Uh, the Tarzan's Treehouse wouldn't be here today. This would be something. It would be gone yes. today if it weren't. For Tony Baxter, uh, when it was a Swiss Family Treehouse, people weren't going in it at all, I guess. And they were talking about um, ripping it out and re like, yeah, repurposing this space. Or like merch. Yeah, it, shopping in the 90s. Right, right. Uh, in the 90s, it, this was after Indiana Jones, right? Uh, I don't know. I think so. I'm fine to say yes. Yeah. But anyway, they were talking about, okay, we're going to take down Swiss... Can you imagine Adventureland without Swiss Family or without the Treehouse? It would be odd. It, it, it gives the whole end a verticality. Yeah, it sure does. Uh, plus, I mean, all this lushness yeah. right here. Yeah. Uh, they were going to take this out and just do something else. And, you know, Tony observed that that would be a travesty. He, and he said the magic words, current IP. IP. He said, hey, why don't we make that... A compromise. We'll compromise. We'll make it Tarzan's Treehouse and not Swiss Family Treehouse. Yeah. And Disney, with their uh, dollar bill eyeballs... They were sweet enough to <laughs> They said, okay, that's a good enough reason to keep it. Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, so we're going to go up in this treehouse and observe some views that you get. That, you know, I mean, sure, it's not the sexiest of attractions when it comes to, like, you know, how many guests go through it per hour. Uh, you know, it doesn't show up on anybody's radar, you typically. People walk right by it constantly. It's just a tree. But, I mean, just so when, you, when you're in it, it's, it's kind of magical. When you're in the treehouse, it's kind of magical about how this fits yeah. into the land. We just don't, don't do it in the morning like we do when you're in Catsburg. Yeah, right. Well, we're going to do it now in the afternoon almost. Let's go up Tarzan's treehouse. While we're at it, uh, I don't know if you guys... Tropical Hideaway is under construction, and uh, <clears throat> we were trying. To, you can't see. <laughs> we're, we we want to see if we can get a view of what's happening at Tropical Hideaway from the trees. Ian says he's already been up here once, and you said it didn't look. I don't. You couldn't I, tell. I couldn't tell if you could see. I don't think well, so. Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, we're gonna give it a shot, or I'm gonna give it a shot because um, I'm a cynic, and I I, I, I'm all, I always am optimistic about this. No, kind what of thing. you mean is you're obsessed with updates. That's true. It's really more than that than anything. I'm gonna keep trying. I'm gonna keep looking through. By the way, we got some decent shots through the cracks of the uh, thing today, so watch out for our update on uh, the, the construction. And he's right, this tree is just <laughs> right in the middle. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> hey, you know, trees though, Ian, we've said, are 90% air, thus we should be able to see through them. No? 
I was gonna say, I'd rather have the trees than not have them. Absolutely. Trees are everything at well, Disneyland. Well, Disney World Tub, they, you know, they move all the yeah. trees just so they can have, so people can see the fireworks. And I get that, but like, Still the charm comes from the trees. That's right. Trees Same with Main Street. are perhaps the most underrated feature of any part of the Disneyland Park. Even Tomorrowland, where you think trees have no play. They give, they add height, depth, shade. Yeah. They do everything. Well, they give it life. Yeah. They're trying to get scared, these two. Good luck, ladies. I hope you make it. Don't make Tarzan scream or cry. Baby Tarzan. Oh gosh, there, there it goes. Is. They did it. Oh, and now he's crying. Ian, what are we gonna do next? Big Thunder or Indiana Jones? Hmm, well, let's see what Fast Pass is closest first. I, I really like to ride Big Thunder. <laughs> Let me take a look at that and see what wait times and fast passes are going, shall I? Sure. And we'll get back to you. In the meantime, just enjoy the splendor. Look at these views, Ian. Are you going to get this view from a gift shop? I uh, know. They won't let you go up and climb the gift shops. I mean, Jerry's making that much of this will be fine. <laughs> I can climb this tree. No, you can go up the stairs. You can't climb the tree. There's, there's a difference. That's true. Well, I, I guess. Okay. Uh, but I yeah, think a this. Of prank is fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love this treehouse. I love these views. Fantastic. It's too bad we can't get a view of Tropical Hideaway. I'm sorry. We can't get a view of Tarzan's ripped abs. Hey Ian, do you think that that's the boat that Tarzan's parents died in? I believe that, well, I don't, I don't think that's not how they died. They didn't die Just did. You ask me a question, I'm gonna think about it and try to answer it. No, they were killed by a. a Support. Uh, yeah, but. I, I like to get dark every now and then. I'm, you. I'm, I'm like the, that is supposed to be what they use, but what they, you know, they, they got to shore from and points to that. Ian, try to imagine. Jeez, Louise. Oh, yeah. uh, welcome to the uh, David is a sick person segment of Fresh Bake. All right, moving on. Either. I mean, if it was a really cool gift shop, maybe. It was a cool gift shop. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying, how cool would it be to have a shop that have, has, has a stream that flows into and through and then out of it? That would be, you know what? You know who would make something like that? Tony Baxter. Tony Baxter would make something like that. Or maybe Joe Rody. He might do that. Joe Rody would. You know what? Yeah. What? You know, somebody, when I said we're doing a Tony Baxter day, somebody said, well, how about a Joe Rody day also? There's not enough stuff in here. Yeah, I would have to fly to Walt Disney World basically to do that. Uh, well, he's got mission mission breakout. 
And I, I'm sure he may have been part of other stuff, but I don't know I can't think of anything else, yeah. No, I don't know. Uh, but I would, I would, I mean, he's great. I love Joe Rohde. I just don't know enough about him to do a, a show about him. And we're done. Legs are burning. Well, we just wrapped our uh, Galaxy's Edge coverage. We got to debark, disembark, debark. <laughs> We're getting off the Mark Twain with, with uh, Tiana. How fun is that? Uh, are we going? Is it Big Thunder next? Well, I, th I, I mean, Big Thunder speaks for itself, you guys. Like, I ain't gotta tell you, this is the one attraction, in my opinion, that that Tony Baxter speaks the most on. But wait, this is the first project we've had. It is, and actually. It was in it was in his on his mind for a good decade or so before it finally showed up here at Disneyland. We talked about that I think a couple weeks ago about how the the original concept was intended to go at Walt Disney World um, with the uh, oh Western River Expedition. Western yes. River Expedition. Yeah, yeah. that was a whole big project, a very ambitious idea. Yeah. that uh, it wound up just being yeah uh, Pirates of the Caribbean <laughs> instead. We've got lots more videos for you to see, so grab a churro and check out some of our other videos and have your mind blown by how much fun we're having. We truly are the best of Disney Bake Fresh Daily. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time. Fresh Baked!